has now started 17 games, a full, complete NFL season for the Cleveland Browns. And the one thing I know, you know, we all know, is it's just not working. And he is not even close to the player he used to be. We will talk about it. Your latest Lockdown Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LLB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast, your network, your team every day, your host, Jeff Lloyd. We appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day to the everyday. You're awesome. I suggest more of you become everydayers as we probably switch to draft mode. So subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown NFL. Terms and conditions apply. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. The Cleveland Browns have been labeled a lot of things in my time covering this team and certainly a lot of years beforehand since the return in 1999. But this franchise right now is operating at a level of insanity. Deshaun Watson is not that guy. Deshaun Watson couldn't carry Deshaun Watson of 2020's suitcase with two hands and wheels on it. He is not it. I understand there was a major investment, monetarily, compensation-wise, hurting your fan base, hurting your home city, all of those things you did. And you want to know what? You have a chance to look good right now, Cleveland. You have a chance to look good You need to sit Deshaun Watson for this week. And most likely, you need to never start Deshaun Watson again. First things first. Some of you saw on social media yesterday. I just want to thank everybody uh, for the kind words reaching out. I've tried a million times to record yesterday. You know, in a situation like that, it's just really, really difficult to get any words out. But I do want to thank all of you for who reached out yesterday, a tough day for the family, certainly a tough day for my wife, as you all know, everything she went through. Well, that was her companion through all of what she went through last late winter, early spring. Okay. And maybe my emotions are running high, but you want to know what, if there's a time to let loose, this is certainly the time to let loose. The play is inexcusable. It's inexplicable. It's deplorable. There's no other way to describe it. We try to make excuses about the offensive line. We try to make excuses about the running game. We try to make excuses. Well, the receivers are dropping too many passes. Well, you want to know what? We're talking about the most important position in the game, right? Quarterback's the most important position in the game. So why don't you try to at least change it for change sake? There's a million other reasons you should change it. And look, nobody tried harder. Nobody sat here every week for the better part of two years, two plus years. And try to say, oh, I think it's going to work. I think it's getting there. I think it's getting better. It's just not. It is just not. You owe it to 52 other players in that locker room. You owe it to 68,000 plus that pay their hard-earned money to show up to your building eight or nine times a year with the hopes of ever getting to sit there once in January for a playoff game. With the way it currently looks like now is about as possible as me hitting Powerball this evening. It is just not working. Yes, the offensive line isn't playing great. But guess, you know what? When they do hold up and they give him protection, he's out of the pocket. He's running for his life when he doesn't have to. He is rolling away from pressure that isn't there, away from play sides. He is sometimes rolling himself from pressure that is not there and giving a tell and having would-be tacklers now walk into would-be passing lanes. I try. I've tried. 
it is just not working. His play is regressing. He's had two games this year with a QBR under 10. 10! Carolina Panthers, for all intents and purposes, have probably already given up on Bryce Young. New York Jets didn't wait any time at all with Zach Wilson. So many teams with so many quarterbacks see it, see it's not working, try and still see it's not working, and bail. This team has tried and tried again and tried again and tried again. And now all offseason, you let go of a bunch of offensive coaches who were just part of a team that went 11-6 and six in the regular season and went to the playoffs with not one, but two, but three different backup quarterbacks winning football games for you. He is not the answer. He is not what they think he is. You can change the receivers. Whatever happens with the offensive line. Nick Chubb ain't saving this mess. He's Batman. He's not God. He's not fixing this mess. You had ample time to make this work. Now, with all those offensive coaches that you just let go last year, you were now in a situation where your general manager is wearing egg on his face, your head coach is wearing egg on his face, your owner is wearing egg on his face. Everybody looks foolish. Why didn't he play in the summer? You were probably hiding him. Let's be honest. That's why he didn't play in the preseason. You were hiding him. You truly were. There's no other reason. You didn't want him out there because you hope by some grace of God, by September, after two plus years, all of these things would have fixed themselves. They're not. I'm not giving Jimmy Haslam a hard time. I'm not giving Andrew Berry a hard time. I'm not giving Kevin Stefanski a hard time. But let's face the fact, boys. It is just not good. It is just not working. It is less than good. There is no way you're telling me DTR can't do exactly what he did over five weeks. It is time to play Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is already somebody that this city has kind of fallen in love with, basically frothing at the mouth to get Jameis Winston under center. Hell, they're probably frothing at the mouth to get anybody under center. Heck, me, you, your dog, your cat, anybody under center. It has nothing to do with the fact that whether he's liked or he's not liked or what he went through off the field. None of that has anything to do with anything now. He can't play. He's not playing well. He's playing terrible. $230 million or not, any other quarterback would be benched for this play. So Cleveland, you got to correct it. Otherwise, you better not show your face to your players in your locker room. You better walk around with your head down. Because they deserve better. Everybody deserves better. Your city, your fan base, everyone in that locker room, the guy who sells the popcorn, the guy who sells the beer, they all deserve better. Change is needed, and change is needed immediately. We'll talk some of that offensive cluster crap from yesterday as we continue on your latest Locked On Browns. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Look, I'm not looking for any other jobs, but you're a fool if you do not put your information out on LinkedIn because you want to know what? You'll never know if your dream job is out there. But if your dream job is out there and you are on LinkedIn and you have some compatibilities to get that dream job, guess what? It might sync up for them. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other job sites. So if you're looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. Or if you're not looking on LinkedIn, most likely you're not looking at all. On LinkedIn, 8%, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free, for free at LinkedIn.com. Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free 
terms and conditions apply. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Halloween lets us have fun with what scares us. But what about those fears that don't involve zombies and ghosts? Therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Look, I'm a parent. I'm sure a lot of you are parents. We all deal with it, right? You know, am I doing everything I can for my spouse, for my kids, for their future, for my future? It's just a lot. And sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. If you've benefited from therapy, you should really tell others. This is what I'm trying to do here with you guys. I've told you, I've had a rough year here and I thought I was strong. And, you know, I was taught that maybe talking about your problems maybe shows that you're weak. The one thing I have learned is the weak are the ones who don't realize that something's wrong and don't do anything to improve themselves. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Maybe it's just not working out and BetterHelp understands that. That's why there is no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Your latest Locked On Browns continues. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. Again, appreciate all of you who make the show your first listen every single day. Join the everyday crowd. Become an everydayer. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Just some thoughts from yesterday. You know, you know first, second play, oh, first play, right? David Njoku, 14 yards. Hey, Chiefs back. This is good. Yeah. Uh, you threw him one more ball. Um and it was one of those Kansas City Chiefs RPOs where basically, you know, you kind of roll all the way to the right and you have your guys just stop. So you take everybody with you. We've seen Travis Kelsey catch it a thousand times. Yeah. Sean Watts can't throw that five yard pass. Five yard pass. Couldn't complete it. Couldn't even come close to completing it. Chief ended up getting hurt. Apparently scheduled for an MRI. So, you know, of course, one of the things we're putting guys out there a little bit thing. There is a chance they can re an injury, or in this case, create a new one. So couldn't find a way to get him involved. Um, after uh, halftime, Washington gets the ball. JOK creates the fumble. Martin Emerson recovers it. He hit a couple of big balls to Cooper. He get it to two-yard line. And look, this is another thing, and this is one you can certainly put on the coaching staff. How many times yesterday, I'm thinking of three right off the top of my head. Well, of course, this one on the offensive side of the ball. Two on the defense side ball. What is with 12 men in the huddle? You either know you're in or you know you're out. But three times, two defensively, one offensively. Of course, created issues, you know, with that, stole the drive, of course, killed the drive. You know, most people thought Deshaun was walking off the field like he was quitting. He understood there were 12 guys on the field. He was understanding he was getting the penalty. But you can certainly see Deshaun Watson probably doesn't want to play for Coach Kevin Stefanski. And Kevin Stefanski probably doesn't want Deshaun Watson playing for him. But of these two guys, one of them's got a choice. Deshaun Watson, he's got nowhere else to go. He's got nowhere else to go. There's probably another team in the league right now that wants him. With all that comes along with it, and this is what his play has been through 17 games, even if the Browns paid 85% of his salary, I doubt there's another team in the NFL that will touch him. Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Berry. Jimmy Haslam, look, you can blame any one of them. And look, all three of them have their hand in this. All right? That's fine. But we are talking about way, way too much intelligence between these three gentlemen to realize that they have no shot at winning an NFL football game with this guy. A umpteen-time billionaire, a Harvard graduate, a University of Penn graduate, who are we kidding at this point? You can't fool us. There's an old line. I can't say it here, but the don't BS a BSer. And that really kind of feels every time 
that Coach Stefanski has to go speak, whether it's during the week, whether it's post game, that you're trying to put a shine on the you know what. It is just not working. And you want to know what? Who knows if Jameis Winston would be substantially better? I don't know. I do know this. Jameis Winston could not be substantially worse by no means whatsoever. You can't get any lower than zero. That's exactly where Deshaun Watson's play is right now. You want to play DTR? That's fine. I'm just going by what's the next logical step. While you still possibly have any chance at salvaging your season. I thought this was a team that conceivably was going to go to the Super Bowl. The NFL draft order came out this week for 2025. The Browns would currently be drafting fifth. Fifth. Are you kidding me? The offensive line, the right side had its issues yesterday. Joe Batonio and even Jedrick Wills, I think, played close to what we think is the norm for this team. Ethan Posick went down again. I think this time it's a knee, you know, headed for an MRI. Just play Nick Harris. Ethan Posick, as a center in the NFL, has given up the most pressures and the most sacks in 2024. So did the best of Ethan Posick leave in Bill Callahan's bag and go to Nashville, Tennessee? Maybe. But, and the Browns kind of have the funniest thing, have the opportunity to do the funniest thing in the world here. You can play Nick Harris over Ethan Posick. When a couple of years ago, Nick Harris got hurt, you replaced him with Ethan Posick, which led to Ethan Posick getting a contract extension, which led to Nick Harris going to Seattle, which led to you trading back for Nick Harris. Just make Nick Harris a center. Zach Zinter and Dewan Jones. Zach Zinter, I think we see where there's going to be a capable player there one day. Dewan, there's a lot of work that's got to be done. And and it's really difficult when you were that large of a human being. But you really, really need to get that weight down to an appropriate number. I don't even know what the appropriate number is. We're talking about a six foot 10 guy. I have faith that Dewan can get there. You know, even, you know, again, oh, we'll look at the running stats. No, let's stop looking at running stats. It was two big runs one for Foreman, one for, you know, Jerome Ford. It's the same thing that's been going on all season. And of course, you know, any chance you have to feature Dante Foreman, go ahead and do that. I don't think Jerome Ford had a carry in the first half. Third and two, Pierre Strong. Pierre Strong. Really? Guys have played in weeks, and he's your third string running back. And probably the only reason he's on the roster is because Nick Chubb and Naheem Hines aren't back yet. Everything is just deplorable. It is terrible. The blocking, the running, the receiving, all of it is bad. And that is the absolute reason why you need to play Jameis Winston this week. Because if it doesn't look any better with Jameis Winston, then you know your system's crap and you got to squash all of that. If it does look better, then you wonder about whether or not you have a team that might be quitting around your quarterback, which would be quitting around your coach and your general manager. We're going to continue here on Locked On Browns. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. Hang in there, folks. One and four ain't fun. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. And they always ask us to give, you know, maybe some betting ideas. Bet the Eagles next week. I don't even know what the line is. Just bet the Eagles. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. We appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The Everyday Crowd, if you're not a member by now, make a new plan, stand, subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. Defensively, you lose Denzel Ward, hamstring injury, MRI testing to be done or whatever. We'll see where we're at with Denzel Ward. Martin Emerson, 
smoked by Diami Brown yesterday. Did recover a fumble for whatever that's worth. Um, first series, you get the interception from JOK. So actually, not a terrible day from JOK. Had a great PFF grade, I think, north of 90. You know, interception. Uh, of course, forced a fumble. The um, the blitz on the second drive, and you had Grant Delpit, and you had JOK basically take each other out. And this happened to JOK later in the game as far as his you know, pass rush discipline. And you heard him say it through the announce team that, oh, you know, they felt like, oh, this is like a Lamar Jackson week. You know, they're good to this. They've been used to this. You've got to rush with some discipline. And you've got to rush with the understanding that he has no qualms about running. These guys aren't sitting ducks. You ever remember when you were a kid playing tag and the really fast kids and the really good kids just stood there still and waited for you to make their move and then just dusted you and made you look like a dope? That's what these quarterbacks do. That's what a Lamar Jackson does. That's what a Jaden Daniels certainly does. And the scariest thing about Jaden Daniels yesterday, as much as he was running around, I don't even know if we ever saw Jaden Daniels hit full speed. That's the scary thing about Jaden Daniels. I told you. I told you all what I thought about Jaden Daniels. I told you what I thought he was capable of. And his throwing ability, ridiculous. That ball to Terry McLaren after breaking the containment, well, containment, <laughs> after breaking away from JOK and Grant Talbot. And I'll be honest, I think Denzel Ward just didn't really think he could make the throw. And I'll be honest, because there's not a lot of guys in the NFL that can make that throw. Jaden Daniels is one of them. NFC's, NFC's two best teams. Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Commanders. Just like we all thought, right? Just like we all expected. Weird over there in the NFC. But you're not getting the defense that you got last year. Heck, I don't even know. This is this is right now might be – could be the worst defense during the Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski regime. Maybe some of it has to do with the fact that they're just trying too hard because they maybe feel like they have to play flawless football. And I can get it. But this is yet another reason why you need to make a change at quarterback. I don't know if your defense believes in him. I don't know if anybody believes in him. But you owe it to your defense. And who knows? Maybe the defense will tighten up. They miss tackles everywhere. All over the place. They don't wrap up. And it was made up for last year because they gang tackled. So even if a guy missed something, somebody else was right there. So the guy, even if he even got a yard, a yard, there was somebody else up in his grill taking him to the ground. I feel bad for a lot of guys on this team, on this defense, on this offense, that are out there every day putting it in, putting in the work, putting in the extra time with film work, everything. Because this team right now would not win another football game. There is not, there's not a team that they will beat on that schedule. There's not a team. You're going to beat the Cincinnati Bengals either time? Probably not. Certainly not going to beat the Baltimore Ravens. I doubt you beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we got five games. Yeah, so it's like 12 more to go. Uh, uh, what's left? Philadelphia Eagles, not beating them. Chargers, nope. Chiefs, nah, not beating them either. Uh, Dolphins, nope, not beating them either. Saints, yeah, not beating them either. If this continues, the Cleveland Browns will go 1-16. This team is not capable of beating anybody right now the way this quarterback is playing. And maybe some of it is I, I we can't really evaluate everybody else. And that would be yet another reason to make a change at the quarterback position is. Because I'll tell you what, Jameis Winston is going to stand in that pocket. He'll take a beating. Like a, like a heavyweight, he will take a beating. Because that's the type of guy he is. He's not going to run. You want know why he's not going to run? Because he doesn't run very well. And I'll be honest, Deshaun Watson doesn't run very well anymore either. He's got a strong arm. He's taller. He's bigger. He's not going to run away from pressures that's not there. He's going to have the guts to drill a deep crosser that was open yesterday, especially with a guy in the flat yesterday. All stuff you saw. He's not seeing open receivers. He's running away from pressure that isn't there. Is he broken forever? I don't know. And I'll be completely with, honest with you. I don't care to find out. If he never played quarterback for the Cleveland Browns again, I'd be more than fine with it. I don't care what happens to the money. I don't care about the sunken cost of all the draft picks because that's already rearview mirrored. It's already in the past. Get ready to trade some guys. You want to send Amari Cooper off to go play for a you know, contender? Let him go. 
I don't know about some of the, you know, other guys, the way you feel of them, but if you want to go move on, move on. Mike Hall will be back this week. That's certainly going to be something interesting. Finally get our eyes on the second round pick. But if you take anything away from this podcast today, just know, even though I tried to defend this to the end, there is no defending it anymore. This is inexcusable, deplorable, unacceptable. It is below the lowest of the low. There is not a quarterback on an NFL roster right now that couldn't go out and duplicate what Deshaun Watson has done over the last five weeks. Simple. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd is a bunch of filthy animals. We're all a bunch of filthy animals, and we're going to get through this together. I suggest those of you that are new become a filthy animal. Subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, yesterday, today, and forever, LGB, not ELOB. Let's go, Browns.